Hello, welcome along to another week of fantastic guests. You know, I've been so lucky in the last few months to bring on some wonderful people that I've got to know over the years. And the whole point of this live stream is to be able to just have a conversation. That's the whole point of it. It's a conversation, but it's not just me with that person. It's you too. And this week, you just saw there, Tessa Niles is with us. Tessa is the author of Backtrack, the voice behind music's greatest stars. But she's also part of the soundtrack to our lives. In fact, I would say to anyone tonight, if you looked in your record collection, it is likely that Tessa's voice is on that track that you listen to. She is pretty much all over the music industry. So welcome to our live stream, Tessa Niles. Good to have you with us. Hello, welcome. Tessa is with us on the program. Thank you, hello. Hello, hello. Really good to see you. Thank you, likewise, great to be here. Do you know, um, it's, it's something that you and I have discussed for a while about it'd be really nice to get together and actually have a conversation and uh, be able to, to talk about some of the stuff that we've talked about on my other world, uh, the radio show, uh, but also just when we've chatted, you know, about some of the, the moments in your life. And I know so many people tonight who are watching on Facebook, Twitter and Twitch are so excited about asking you a question too about some of that. But Tessa, I'd like to start at the very beginning. Um, and when, for you, music became a huge part of your life, maybe even before you did it professionally, when did you realise that you just had a connection with music? I'd have to blame television commercials because I found myself with my brother singing along to kind of the, the, the soundtrack of the 70s, if you like, the, the, all the adverts that had those incredible tunes that are so memorable. You know, you had the kind of R. White's Lemonade one that everyone remembers and uh, um, yeah, the She Flies Like a Bird in the Sky. Uh, was that um, Nimble? I think it might have been Nimble. Anyway, yeah. it, all of those kind of fantastic uh, commercials were just, I, uh, my brother and I would just drive my parents nuts. We'd sing them all day long. We'd find the harmonies that weren't there. Um, and that became such a such a big thing. So it was my brother and I that started to sing together, really. That's how it started. 
And it's funny, isn't it? You know, you, you talked about the old R What White's Lemonade uh, piece. And it was uh, Elvis Costello's dad, wasn't it, That's who sang right. that? Is that right? Oh, secret lemonade, lemonade drink. drinker. <laughs> 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 but it was but funny it, because we all had the one telly. Yeah, largely. Right. I mean, unless you were dead posh and you had a couple, but largely we all sat around and listened to the same stuff. So we have yeah. very common reference points. Although you're a bit younger than me, but no, no but, but 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 you're right though. Um, the the uh, the ability to kind of like you know, I think of my in my um, grandma's house in Dover. You know, there was the three channels before Channel Four came around in in, in eighty four, and yeah. um, and you had the old Red Effusion box, which you had to turn the three channels to get to to, you had to, to get watch. up. You had to get up. Oh, <gasps> you had to get up. <laughs> and now look where we are 2021 <laughs> we're broadcasting to each other to around the world and uh, we're both You've in the got same your own show oh, no, it's mad. Exactly. We're, we're, we're both in the same county and uh it, it's so so good having you on um so backing singer to the stars is how often uh people like myself in broadcasting would describe you i think it's an interesting phrase as well backing singer because for me that doesn't go far enough to what you do and i know that we'll talk about this a little later on that you're part of a group called unsung singers which really explores that in documentary on stage and of course in your book where you've looked at that story too um but people are going to say right okay so how did you first get that first break and where were you and uh what happened when you walked through your very first, I guess, studio door. Mm. I I was 13 when I started to do my first um, sessions, which was mad. I used to actually show up in my school uniform. Probably the less said about that, the better. But um, yeah, I, I was working in a studio in Margate and I would back the local artists. Um, and I think I realised very, very early on that, um, first of all, I could probably make some money at it. I think I used to make 40p something like that, which was, you know, a lot more than my pocket money in those days. And um, and also that I loved it and that I was, I was okay at it. I was good at it, if you like, because school was really held no mystery for me at all. Uh, and I was academically very weak. So um, the minute I thought I had a talent and could sing, I sort of chased it down, really. That's, that's what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. yeah. Was it, was it something that, you, you, I mean, we, we've talked a lot with, with other guests about almost feeling a pull in some sort of, you know, ethereal way that you needed to be a singer. Was that in your mind? Did you have that kind of thought about, you know, I, I need to sing. Singing is is who I am. Yes. Once I discovered it. Uh, right. And, and it's, it, it's interesting, isn't it? That What is that exact point? It's difficult to know. But once I'd figured it out, I, I was on a mission. Nothing else mattered really at that point it was like okay um how can i how can i get not to be a backing singer because i didn't really i mean i knew they existed because i used to scour the backs of of people's albums and see you know all these names that kind of popped up um you know over time um but i don't think a lot of people set out to be backing singers i think they do now i think it's quite different but um when i started out no we didn't we um I think we just wanted to be singers. I didn't. I don't ever remember thinking I want to be a star, but I remember very specifically wanting to be a singer. And that's something we'll come to later because it's a very interesting thing with you about the whole word star and mm. being at the front of the stage or where you are comfortable. We'll talk about that on the way. And um, just for those who are joining us, welcome along. It's so great having you and more and more people joining all the time. Uh, this is The Conversation. Uh, I'm Dominic King and we do this each and every Thursday evening. Um, Tessa Niles is with us tonight. Uh, I think we need to see, don't we, just some of the moments of, <laughs> of Tessa's career. Uh, they, this is a snapshot, literally, of some of the work that uh, Tessa has done over the years. And in fact, so much so, I've already had messages coming in s listing a whole bunch of other stuff that Tessa has done that are not even included on this. Um, okay, let's just take a look at this gallery. I love this gallery now. It's become our new thing where we just look at some of the images. And we're just going to look at this test together and just look. Look at the impact of this. People feasting their eyes around those shots <laughs> as we speak. I mean, that is an incredible, incredible gallery. And uh, I thought what we'll do is we'll start off. We'll we'll, we'll look more at these stories um, throughout the evening together. But we'll start off just looking at some of those as people look around that uh, wall. 
Uh, I want to go straight up to the very top. Uh, and we've got you and David Bowie together. And uh, that's Live Aid, right? That's Live Aid. Yeah, that was a moment. <clears throat> a third of humanity watched Live Aid, which is still blows my mind every time I think about that. Yeah, that was the most fortunate situation. Got a call pretty much out of the blue saying, did I want to work um, on a gig that was a charitable gig? And I said, yeah, it sounds great. Um, it was quite kind of cloak and dagger. Nobody really sort of told me what it was. And they didn't tell me who I was working for uh, until um, until a couple of days later. And I showed up at rehearsals and it was um, Mr. Bowie. I mean, the the I love those two shots because you know you're you're right both captured there in the moment and the the one at the top and then the one slightly down below they both have this just incredible sense your face says it all are you just out of interest are you completely in professional mode there or are you experiencing the moment do you realize what's happening i think at 22 i wasn't really that professional i mean <laughs> I mean, I was still sort of finding my way. Um, I, I, I think I was totally in the moment. I just was in a state of bliss. I mean, I've, I'd walked out onto this stage and there were just thousands and thousands of people. I'd never experienced anything like it in my life. In fact, at the beginning of the Queen biopic, it has um, the, the Queen kind of walking towards this velvet curtain that's been strung up and, and the camera follows them walking through onto the stage. And that was exactly the view that I had when I walked, th walked through with Bowie. And it was just, when I saw the movie, I was just utterly transported back into this Phenomenal. I mean, yeah, I was a girl from Ilford, Essex, you know. Um, what did I know about, about Wembley Stadium? And there I was. We'll come back to that story uh, later. And um, the, the one on the right for everyone is you in the studio. Can you tell us who's there? I can see Robbie Williams, clearly. Yeah, that's Robbie Williams. And that's a, a duvet over the back of, uh, obviously, for some cladding there. I thought it uh, was. <laughs> Is that Guest because appearance. they were very late nights? <laughs> <laughs> Could have been, actually. Knowing Robbie, it might have been. Um, yeah, guest appearance from Duvet. And the lady to my right is Katie Kassoon, who is an absolute legend. Uh, there may be people um, uh, watching tonight who remember Mac and Katie Kassoon. Uh, and Mac was her brother, and, and of course they had sugar candy kisses. And, um, yeah, that was us recording Rock DJ. So that was the first time I'd met Robbie. And, and the recording of Rock DJ, which was no fun at all. Was it not? No, it was... <laughs> of course it was. It was amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> it was amazing. And that, you know, I just absolutely fell in love with Robbie that I day. I know you say that as in an irony because it was a lot of fun. I know you've told me many stories. Um, and the the what I, what I really love is the fact that whenever – uh, that is played particularly by uh radio presenters like me you know i play that song and i'm i must bore family and friends rigid whenever it comes on on a jukebox or in a car it's like a of course uh that's tessa niles on uh, the vocals there with do you the do the DJ. Oh, I do, of course. The dance, uh, well, look, you know. Look, 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 look. We got, well, let, let's bring let's um let, let's just leave that gallery for a second there um it's it's a wonderful gallery well you've got some great pictures there but uh let me bring you back in because uh what was the move that that you did for rock I DJ? Move is, I don't want to rock DJ. Yeah, a classic, classic seventies. Love it. <laughs> I love it. It's so good, so so good. Um, music then over the years with uh, different bands, different people that 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 you worked with. Um, it's a real range. I mean, we we listed some uh, on on the stream there about some of the people that you've worked with but if you go back to to the, the david bowie uh, eric clapton huge part of mm. clapton band part of uh, the experience what what's it been like over the years working with him just extraordinary i mean i think i was with eric for about 12 years on and off and so that you know, it binds you and bonds you to to to, uh, to the experience, and uh, also to the phenomenal musicians that I was working with as well. I had the privilege of working with in in that particular band, and we went through some difficult times too. We uh, we went through the death of of Clapton's son, uh, which was beyond tragic, and also the helicopter crash that. Um, 
that ended up killing um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, which was again, you know, a, a real tragedy. So, you know, the music and those experiences really bound us together. And and working for Clapton was just amazing. I mean, he's a legend. It feels to me, though, that when you work with these different artists, um, you become part of that family. Um, I know people talk a lot about that, and, and almost sometimes it's felt that it's a you know that can't be really the case. But you, you spend so much time with them because uh, I don't think uh, everyone realizes how much time is spent not being on a stage, not being. Uh, there you're on the bus you're on the you're on the plane you're you know you're in that environment backstage waiting for sometimes hours that 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 takes its toll i guess but at the same time it also creates a, a camaraderie a, a, an ability to to connect with people it does absolutely absolutely and and so much so that it you can feel bereft when you're not with those people and not working with them anymore because they become such a such a tight knit family and, and, and very much part of your daily life. Um, so it, it's it's sometimes tough not to work with them. Um, yeah, uh, we, yeah, we experience so much together and particularly with the Clapton Band as well. Uh, that 12 year period, we did so much, we did so much work. Also, you're right, so much hanging around, so much traveling, so much of the other stuff, but you're always together. So what is the role then? Uh, and this sounds really obvious because clearly people say, well, you sing. But what is the role of a backing singer in music? What is the role of that uh, fellow singer? Because because I don't know. Do you, do, you, do, do you like the word backing singer? Have you just become okay with it? Do, do you have a different relationship? Is it changed over the years? What, what's, your, what's your preferred sense? Artist? No, I, I'm actually fine with backing singer. Um, <clears throat> I'm also fine with session singer, session musician, backup vocalist. Um, I, I think there is a myth about backing singing. Um, some people don't know quite why you're there. They're, they're, they're not entirely sure whether you're there for the just the glamour aspect or whether you're there, um, you know, to, to provide... Uh, the musical accompaniment. I, I think a lot, it, it's it's a little bit unknown. Certainly on record, um, it's very easy uh, to describe because you're boosting the artist or the band. You're boosting the song. You're 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 creating that um, sort of glorious moment where the chorus kicks in and boom, the, you know the singers are behind it and and just you know sending it into hyperspace. Ho hopefully. Um, so, but I think it's been kind of maligned. I think the word backing perhaps makes people feel that you're sort of a lesser, a lesser part of, of the music making, which which really isn't true. Well, well, that well, that's the the point, really, for me. You know, because I, I think that a number of our uh, songs that we hear that have got session artists backing singers with them just would not be the same, would it? It just wouldn't yeah. be. The soundtrack yeah. to our lives would not be the same if we didn't hear those returns or those Absolutely. Those riffs imagine those, not hearing you know. um, just a little bit, just a little bit in respect. I mean, imagine if that yeah. wasn't there or if yeah, you it, took it, out, um, you know, the vocals in Rock DJ or, um, you know, so so many others but, but, uh, that but, are uh, integral. I, I think, yeah, and I think I've said to you before um, about like Paul Young, you know, and 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 the um, the singers who are the fabulously wealthy tarts. tarts. What are they called? Yeah, yeah. and um, and they they, for example, you know, uh, I always have that thing. Can you buy the book of love? You know, I have that thing in my head that you know you, you're repeating it almost. In, you know, in uh, your car. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. they were great, and they really had their own sound. They were they were fantastic, and very often, you know. <clears throat> the singers are featured. You know, these backing vocal lines become part of the hook of the song. So kind of take it away and there's very empty space and, and you wouldn't you wouldn't get that same feel. And um, one one interesting thing is that, you know, those who are watching this right now, you know, there there's people who are like me, fans, listeners, you know, those who have heard the records over the years. And there are friends. There are also fellow professionals. Um, it's funny, actually, you know, uh, last week's guest, uh, Elliot Kennedy, 
um, who was on with us, who I know you fantastic, uh, yeah, you love. He was, and he, 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 he was so pleased that you sent a message to him last week. Um, well, I can tell you that uh, Elliot is being my uh, second producer on this show tonight. He's sending me so <laughs> many messages right now uh, that I'm not even going to wait. Thanks, for the, um, I'm not even going to wait for the. Uh, the, the questions uh, halfway oh, through because they're such great sort of points he makes. I'm just going to bring up Elliot's um, uh, thoughts here because now anyone who didn't watch last week, uh, Elliot Kennedy uh, is a songwriter. He's a producer. He's produced some of the biggest music in our country. Oh. Um, he's worked with so many different people um, over the years. Uh, Brian Adams, Celine Dion, uh, you name it, he's done it. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, he's co-writer and producer with uh, Gary Barlow too. Uh, but, but Elliot has got some immediate points in, which I think actually just touches on what you just said um so elliot uh just bring this in uh I always thought Tessa, well, more so than any other session singer, really brought a lot to records. Um, he goes on to say um, she had a real punch to her tone that made a chorus just pop. That is a really interesting point there. That's a lovely thing to say. That, that's that's great. I mean, that's that means I've done my job. And thank you very much, Elliot. That's very gracious of you to say. Yeah, I, I um, again, sort of going back to the, the whole backing singer aspect, I was so comfortable and, and still am so comfortable in the supporting role. Um, I, I think, again, there's a bit of a misconception about the fact, oh, shame, you know, she clearly didn't make it as a solo singer. That's why she's a backing singer. I think, so, strangely, some people do feel really? that. Um, really? Yeah, that, oh, you know, always the bridesmaid, never the bride kind of didn't make it. Couldn't be further from the truth in, in my case. Because that's not actually what you ever wanted, was it? Even going back, you know, uh, you know, some of those that you perform with, you know, the police, for example. That's a that's a that's a place to to, to talk about because you went oh. through. <laughs> <laughs> that was police, baptism by fire. <laughs> the police, not, not the police. We're not we're not police. talking about yeah. Um, but <laughs> just talking about the experience with Sting and and going into the studio and meeting actually the band for the first time. What was that like? Uh, <clears throat> scary as all hell, really. Um, How, old were you? I, How old were you? I was 21, 21, yeah. And it really just kind of fell into it. It was interesting because Elliot was talking about, you know, that there was no real rule book for him. He just kind of, by process, uh, fell into many of the things and obviously uh, did incredibly well once he was there and had the opportunity. but. You know, I there was no internet when I started out. There was no way of Googling how to be a session singer. So I, yeah, I, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, put one foot in front of the other. And then I, I got this call to, to go down and, and meet. Again, very cryptic, didn't know who I was meeting. And I went down to a, a North London recording uh, Azure rehearsal room and opened this giant steel door. And inside was... Uh, Sting and Stuart Copeland and Andy Summers. And then I had to speak to them. It was like I was so unprepared. No, there was no one there to, to greet me or introduce me. And so I stood like a lemon and just kind of ugh, took a deep breath and said, hello, <laughs> my name's Tessa Niles. <laughs> I'd like to join your band. No, that I knew they were going on tour. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, so was, that, was that synchronicity? It was. So it was that, in many that, ways synchronicity, yes. Yeah. Okay. So that 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 became um, that became obviously such a huge tour, but it also became uh, a seminal tour. And and you know there are certain, I guess, moments in any uh, band's career that really stand out, and they don't know that obviously at the point that they go into it. It could be just you know, what, how, I wonder how we'll do here. But was there a feeling amongst you all about what was about to happen? I think there was in that they were riding so high at the time. I mean, every breath you take was at number one. So I think we all knew that it was going to be a massive tour. I, I had no idea what touring was about. As I say, it was baptism by fire for me. Um, the week before I started rehearsals with them, I, I was singing in a pub to 120 people. And I thought that was great. I just thought that was brilliant that I had got that far in such a short time to be singing with this wonderful band that I was with at the time called Morrissey Mullen. Um, and so a week later to be, you know, pretty much on the brink of, of working in 40,000 seater stadiums was mind blowing. 
Yeah, and and that I, I I don't think I can quite get my head around what that must be like having that many people in front of you. And the same, obviously, with any concert or arena tour. And um, what do you do as an individual to cope with that? To cope with that feeling, is it adrenaline that is pushing you through? Because there's one thing being in a recording studio and oh. and being in, <clears throat> you know even if it's a famous place like Abbey Road or or wherever you record, but there there's a quite another thing to be physically on a stage with lights coming down the feeling backstage all those people all the expectation yes. and the live yes live. yeah absolutely there's all of that and you're quite right but in a way i always say you don't know what you don't know so i had no experience of this at all and so it was all incredibly new. And I, it, was, it was like being part of a wave. I was just caught up in this wave and just went with it. Whatever it was, I just went with it. But you're right, looking back at it now, um, that adrenaline that gets you through, the noise, the sheer noise of walking out onto, onto a stage with that many people in front of you. Of course, they weren't there to see me. And it kind of helped that we were, <laughs> we were wearing shrouds um, yeah. which was very interesting. The outfits that were made for us, we'd been told, <laughs> we'd, we'd been told before we uh, started rehearsals that uh, I think it was the director or the, the costume maker at the National Theatre was making us some little black numbers. And boy, were they. They were literally shrouds. Clearly, yeah. you know, that the boys didn't want us to be seen particularly, but we got that. But eventually we ditched the shrouds and um, we got some little nice little numbers that we wore. We saw a little flash there of uh, unsung singers, which we'll come back to uh, shortly. But um, uh, just seeing you on stage there with your contemporaries that I know are such good friends now and their careers like yours have just been astronomic, you know, in terms of all of those that you have supported, but also in your own right. And uh, I will come back to that. Um, but I want to just take a look at, again, that gallery, because, you know, you we were talking about uh, working with... Uh, uh, the police and we can see at the bottom uh, of our shot here uh you with sting and um uh it was always so theatrical wasn't it that was the thing it's so much more than today yeah no it was it was that was the old Wembley stadium too so that was backstage I think probably the last night of the tour or something like that judging by what sting's wearing and and what we're wearing that's a lady called dolette mcdonald who's next to me uh absolutely incredible singer sung with everybody talking heads um don henley yeah she's she's phenomenal she became my bezzy mate on that tour she's fantastic so yeah no but we all look quite dapper don't we you, you really do. You know, you, you, you look fantastic in that. And, and then I want to take us to the left-hand side at the bottom, uh, because there you are, um, Eric Clapton and George Harrison. So what's the moment there? Where were you? We were in Tokyo. And we were having a spot of dinner after the show. And um, a photo op came. In fact, it's... You know, I, I look back now and I don't have that many pictures because in kind of in those days, I don't know, I felt a bit uncomfortable taking pictures within that inner sanctum kind of situation. I, sure. I think I always used to feel, crikey, this is the only place that they haven't got a camera sort of thrust in their face. So why would they want me taking pictures of them? And now I sort of regret it because I don't have that many pics, but the ones I have are very special. So, yeah, that was Tokyo and that was Eric and George. Yeah, and, it was and, George's tour, and George used Eric's band, essentially. Yeah, and then uh, Eric's band, which you're a part of below in that huge shot of everyone together. Uh, people can see if they're uh, on their phones, go in close there, because uh, that, 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 that's a big group. That's a big group. And interestingly enough, that's Elton John hiding uh, next to Katie Kassoon as well. W whereabouts? I've got to go in deep there. Where? Yeah, no, he's, he's between... Greg Fillingaines in the yellow suit and Katie. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. That's, That's brilliant. I love it. It's our red. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 I think iconic, you know, it's really hard, isn't it, to think these are just contemporaries. These are people you're working with. The, these are, you know, workmates. Um, yeah. When you see them all together and we're crossing over time and time zones and, you know, moments in our lives. 
And for us on the other end, with our ears, listening to the songs that have been created or we've all had a ticket to go to the concert, you know, to see you there working with your... Uh, not only peers, but friends as well, because a lot of these people I know you've kept uh, in close contact, those who are still with us, of course. Um, and, and and that must be uh, something, uh, Tess, as we all grow older, you know, we we, we, we lose friends. And uh, it, it, I guess it's the memories, like anything else, of, of thinking of those fantastic moments. Yes, absolutely, Dom. No, you're quite right. And I think we're more cognizant of that than ever before, particularly, you know, in the times of, of COVID. We're, we're, I think we're keeping our relationships with people very close to our hearts and, and you know, keeping in touch more and doing all of that because, uh, and particularly with a lot of these artists, you know, I mean, you've only got to think about Bowie and, and the, the hole that he's left in, in everyone's, everyone's life. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's very special. And I've had so many of these kind of, pinch me, I call them pinch me moments, you know, where I'm standing next to someone or I'm working with someone, uh, producing something with them. And I just think, oh my God, how, how did I get here? You know, I'm a lucky, lucky, lucky person. And um, I'm extraordinarily grateful for all of that. Well, well as well, I guess the, the, you know, the, the memories are there, but what's it like for you when you hear the song come on the radio? Because I've always wondered that, you know, if you're on it, what's that like for you when you hear it? Is it? Is it? Do you, do you enjoy that? Oh, it's the best. It's the best. Yeah, good. I could be in the supermarket doing my weekly shop. <laughs> on it comes. I'm, you know, walking down the aisle with my trolley and thinking, yeah, go on, girl, go on, still got it. Uh, and of course, no, you, you... and it never gets old. It never gets old. And and um. And there was a time where my young kids were kind of very nonplussed about what I did. And right. know, they were just like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, no big deal, no biggie. Um, and now, you know, they're really sweet. Sometimes they have like, you know, nights where they just watch mum with their mates. Well, they've just had Makes birthdays. Makes them sound a bit sad, doesn't it? No, no, yeah. no, not at all. But they just have birthdays, <laughs> haven't they? They have, yes. Yeah, they have. Uh, um, and and uh, you know, as they're growing up, yeah, they appreciate it. The the interesting thing is, and that's what I think is really interesting about um, y your career continues. You know, it isn't a period where you go right. Well, I did that towards the end of the seventies, into the eighties, into the nineties, uh, and I you've carried on. You're still working. You're still working um, in all sorts of things, which we'll talk about on the way. I can't believe how quickly this time goes. We're already at the halfway stage of the conversation tonight. Thank you to all those, by the way, who are sending in their questions for Tess tonight. So many uh, questions are coming in, and I'm going to be looking through some of these uh, on the way. Uh, but do get your questions in with us here to talk to Tessa Niles, wherever you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, or Twitch. Uh, you can send your message there, and we will read it out here. I've also had, look, look, I've got a whole bunch of questions on here that have come in for you as well um, before we even started. See, so I'm having we, another pinch me moment. Yeah, we're going to have to get through some of these, aren't we? So we will. Um uh, just before we get to uh, the, those questions, I want to ask about uh, this book. Um, this is the book that you wrote, uh, Backtrack. If people haven't read this, uh, I'd definitely say read it. It's incredible because it really is. We can't do even justice here with, a, with an hour, but it is a behind the scenes. When was the point that it prompted you to, to want to, to write that? Um, and, I, and I must say, um, on the front that people won't necessarily be able to see, but there is a little quote here. This sums it up a lot. <laughs> Robbie Williams says, uh, I can neither confirm nor deny that I've contemplated sleeping with Tessa Niles talent on several occasions. <laughs> That's so Robbie, isn't it? It's so just, Robbie. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, um, I was living in South Africa um, and I was kind of just being mum and bringing up the kids and, and, um, I had somebody come over and we were looking through some some boxes of stuff because she was interested in helping me decorate my office. And she pulled out a bunch of things, records and memorabilia. And, and she said, what are these doing in the box? Why are they not on the walls? Why are you, you know, this is, this is your history. This is mad. You know, you should be ashamed of yourself, young lady. Um, <laughs> and, and I really thought about what she said and I took them out and I, you know, Put them all over the, the walls and stuff and um it prompted me to think you know what i really do need to write some of this stuff down 
purely really for my kids and my family and whoever comes in, in the generations to come um, to just say, you know, just to put it down before I forget it all, frankly, uh, not thinking at all that it would be published and 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 would be read by by many people so yeah who knows you know everyone's got a book in them that's for sure it's just whether or not you actually sit down and and, and write it but it was so well received uh, by the industry because it also shone a light on a forgotten group of people uh, and that group of people go back to effectively the foundations of music and and how how people came together you you opened our conversation by talking about the the kind of um, the r white's uh, lemonade uh, jingle almost you know that, oh. that that resonated with us and we can go to america and hear those singers and um, we can think of like the andrew sisters we can think of all those who oh. created a a sound um that brings us up to why do we need to have harmonies why do we need to have uh, um those who are complementing that person who's at the front of the stage it's because it's the overall mix you're a musical right. instrument in the same way as those on stage with the drums or the guitar or the bass the you know, it, uh, it, it is it is part of that. And with it all, it works, doesn't it? But, right. but you shone a Absolutely. light on a group of people who totally have, in a way, have kind of, um, unless we actually talk about them, they, they get erased from history. They're, it's almost like the side bit. And, and I think that's what's really interesting is that you, you, you brought those people to life. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think, as I say, you know, people didn't really understand the role of of the backing singers or you know uh in the past and so i i watched a, a movie that maybe a lot of people have watched called 20 feet from stardom yeah amazing uh, which was made in the states and it really kind of it was the first time i had ever seen backing singers kind of you know have that kind of platform and i was stunned absolutely stunned i was amazed to see it and, and so proud and, and pleased to, to see that but i was also a little dismayed because it was just Americans, and I thought, well, there are tons of of, uh, of, of British singers too who who've made uh, extraordinary contributions to British music. So um, I got together with a lady called Gina Foster, who is a session singer um, of note and a great friend, and we decided to write a review, um, which. Uh, it basically comprises of four session singers telling our stories, telling the, the stories about the people we've worked with. We sing the music, the songs that we've performed on, and we tell the history of British backing singers um, throughout the show. And it's full of nostalgia. You know, it's full of all the things that, that we were talking about. We sing the jingles. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's a fun, fun show. Yeah, this is Unsung Singers, uh, the, the Brits behind the hits. Uh, awesome. Um, there we are. And, and there you are all together. So um, tell us who we've got in that photo at the top and obviously uh, on the stage as well. And just go through that because this is, for me, you see, this is what's interesting. For me, this is the music industry right here. Well, bless you for saying that. Yeah, I mean, be between us all, I think we've performed on... Yeah, a, a good a good load of, of songs uh, and, and, and hits that we're very proud of. So on the left, we have Gina Foster. If we're looking at the poster, the Brits behind the hits, uh, we have Gina Foster, who, who again, I mentioned is uh, my partner and my co-writer in Unsung Singers. Um, then in the middle, we have Mike Moran, and we wouldn't be able to do what we do without Mike Moran. He is a musical director of note, keyboard player of note, um, just... Uh, played on more hits than you can shake a stick at. He's unbelievable. He co-wrote um, Barcelona with Freddie Mercury. So he's also a, a songwriter of note um, and just incredible. He provides the, the musical accompaniment for us on stage. And he's very funny too, tells great stories. Uh, and then we have Mim Gray, who is an absolute divine singer. I mean, anyone that hears Mim just completely falls in love with her. She is phenomenal. She's a, a songwriter in her own right. She's a phenomenal artist and she's funny as well and tells great stories in the show. Then we have Keith Morell, again, you know, legendary singer. I think he was with Cliff Richard for about 30 years, maybe, maybe yeah, yeah, a good a good 20 something years. So he was part of Cliff's team for a long time and um, has done so many uh, jingles and sung on so many hits as well. In fact, what is he? He's the, he's the Flash guy. I don't know if it's still playing, um, but the Flash. Uh... 
I didn't realize that. Dreams up the impossible. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that, that's. Yeah, he, he does that. He's an incredible yes. mimic. Yeah, yeah. He's that's amazing. that. That's very cool. Um, but but the, the unsung singers is something that uh, has developed over the years. You've done performances, as we can see there. Um, but it's also something that is being picked up in the sense of a documentary, a film. Uh, that there's a whole bunch of stuff that has immersed out of effectively a bunch of friends getting together. I've been lucky enough to have you uh, perform for me on a radio show that I do here in the UK and uh, all of you in the same room. I have to be honest, uh, my friend Casey and I, who uh, are presenting on the show, uh, we were, our minds were blown just by the, just the joy in the room because you, you have so much fun. Harmony singing is possibly the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Really, it is so... It's such a lovely thing to do. It's, you know, you, you have to be, uh, you can't kind of be, have a solo lead vocalist mentality when you're in a choir because you're listening to everybody, you're listening to everybody's tone. It's very much a collaborative uh, thing to do and it's so much fun. Look, Tess, we'll take some questions in a moment because time rapidly moves on, but I think sure. we should hear it, don't you? I think we should hear oh, yeah. some of the sounds yeah. that you've created because uh, th th this is uh, – imagine going to this show. I mean, seriously, you go to this show, maybe when it all opens up again and we're all able to be together again, you'll do more shows. I know you will. Um, but imagine going along and you hear this group of people. Amen. Oh, it's Aww. joyous hearing that. It really is Aww. lovely. I but miss brings, it. God, yeah, I, miss it I was so just much. thinking, I was just thinking, you know, like many other musicians, you know, not being on stage, that must be really weird for you right now. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's very much kind of in our in our blood, in our DNA to, to be together, to perform. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It, it's very, very hard for musicians right now. Thanks for all the comments, by the way, that have been uh, coming in. Uh, so many that we'll get through. And we'll, we, we will start now because I know people are going, oh, please ask my question. <laughs> uh, so that's fine. Uh, but you may have noticed some of them popping up. Uh, we wanted to throw in a few just from people who, were, were, as I said at the beginning, you know, we're starting to say other bands that you've worked with because we're just doing a little snapshot there. But, I mean, it must be just immense. We haven't even talked about Duran Duran. I mean, there, there must be so many uh, bands and artists that you've worked with. Um, do you remember oh. them all? No, if I'm honest, <laughs> I, I don't remember them all. Sometimes I've been caught out, you know, how was it working with so-and-so? And I just go, yeah, great, great. Yeah, they were fab. They were really, really good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, loved, I mean, it, loved that night. Loved it. <laughs> absolutely loved them. Love all their work. Yeah. Um, uh, but, um, but no, Duran Duran, yeah, very special. I did do five albums with them. So that was pretty amazing. Okay, let's take some of these uh, the, these questions then. Um, we're going to kick off straight away. We'll go with uh, Mark, who's uh, in Bletchley in the UK. Um, what, what's your favourite artist to work with? Who? Oh, no. That, that, see, Mark's gone straight in there with one of the most difficult oh, questions for you to so answer. Hard. Well done, Mark. Um, um, what's, the, what's the answer, though? I would say I think... Bowie was just, you know, that moment, that seminal moment in my life that changed everything really for me. So, yeah, a real favourite and, and also working with him because he was so, um, so giving. You know, there, there are artists that you work for that are not particularly interested in, in what the backing singers do. You know, particularly in a live situation, they, they just kind of want you to show up, do your thing and, and be professional, do that. But I mean, I remember Bowie was kind of very keen on, so what are you wearing? Right. And, I, and I wasn't used to that. Um, but Which of course, his the aesthetic was exactly, yeah. you know, he was all about the visuals. So why wouldn't he ask? So that was lovely. And, and you felt very kind of involved in, in the performance. I was talking this week to uh, uh, the blues singer, Dana Gillespie, who yes. uh, worked oh, obviously extensively oh. um, with, uh, well, was was best buddies with, with uh, David when they 
she knew him before he was, of course, David Bowie. So um, she she had a uh, great relationship with Angie and David, and they lived uh, to get. Well, I think she spent more time because she was in Jesus Christ Superstar as Mary Magdalene at the time. But they spent. Lo- she was the first one to do that. Uh, but she um, she spent a lot of time at Beckenham together when, when they yes. all lived there. And yes. um, but she she talked about that kind of you know just sense of him. She heard uh, Space Oddity. 30 minutes after he had come up with it, which I think is incredible. Um, you know, those moments must be interesting in the studio, aren't they? If you if you hear a song for the very first time, you know, when you yeah. hear... Uh, do, do, you, do you get, uh, over the years, do you get an instant connection with, a, with what you're performing with and go, that's going to be a hit? So Rock DJ, for example, you know, you hear a song and you go, that's going to work. Actually, that's a great one to bring up because, yeah, you sort of felt that all the elements were right with that one. It just had such an incredible vibe and and felt so good. And Robbie was at the top of his game and it was just wonderful. So, yeah, there was a strong sense of, oh, if this isn't a hit, I'll eat my hat kind of thing. But then so many times I've thought things would be hits and they weren't. So I'm not really a very good measure of what is and what isn't, you know. Um, I Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I, I who else? Um, favorite? I mean, I think George Harrison, just because. I mean, he was a what Beatle. Did, <laughs> what did you? What did? What did you sing with him? Um, well, I toured with him. Right. So, so it was performing all, all, all his songs. Performed right. live and performed all of those songs. You know, My Sweet Lord. I just, I adore uh, that song so much. I adore it too. Absolutely. So, so underrated as well. It's a brilliant song and so brilliant to do live. Although remembering all of those kind of Indian words at the end, it was a challenge. A challenge. Definitely, def- definitely was a challenge. But just working with him, he was such a kind of Peter Pan type character, you know, so youthful um, and so mischievous too. Gosh. You, what, what, practical what joker. Way? Oh, really? Oh, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was very funny. And he never lost that kind of dry, droll with a puddling thing, you know. Yeah. It was, um, I think, uh, there was a big anniversary of them um, performing in New York for the very first time yesterday. And uh, I was watching some of the footage of just the crowds, obviously, greeting them in New York. But what was really funny is that um, uh, Paul and I think John, uh, they they said to the uh, gathered US press, they said... um, and, and bearing in mind, this is quite a bold thing. You know, they did the whole kind of, you know, oh, we're, we're, we're over here. I'm not going to do the accent, I'll be terrible at it. But they, but they basically <laughs> said, no, uh, not. Because uh, it stays online forever. Uh, but they, 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 they basically said uh, something along the lines of, um, and of course, uh, all our folk songs were made by us. And that's what you now play. All your folk songs are, are ours. And you think, God, that's the very first moment. They just got off the plane. And they've already insulted the nation. And yet somehow everyone loves them. Yeah. Yeah, no, they just got away with it. They were brilliant. Let, let's take some more comments. This is really lovely. Um, we'll take this one here, if I can get that to work. Um, there we go. Um, from Victoria. Uh, being Aww. a great session singer, true skill. You Do you know Victoria? Um, we're friends on Facebook. Oh, wonderful. And um, very underrated. Not many can do it. Blending seamlessly with whoever you're hired to sing with, supporting the lead vocalist to showcase what they do. It's not for the faint of heart. And Tess is the best. Not for the faint of heart, says Victoria. Is that true? Wow. Victoria, that's incredibly kind of you to say that. Um, yeah, I think you have to have a different mindset. I think you have to kind of somewhat park your ego kind of at the door because you're working for the main event and your your mission is really to make them sound as good as possible. So it's not a job for someone who really is looking to be the main event and, and, and to be you know, out, out front. Um, but that, yeah, thank you, Victoria. That's, that's very kind of you to say. Uh, is there a song you wish you'd done backing vocals on from uh, Ronky Chalmers? Oh my God, there's so many. There's so many. How long we got? Okay. Um, <laughs> respect. Oh. California Dreaming. Oh, those vocals. But then I would have had to have been a mama in, in the Mamas and Papas. Um, for once in my life, Stevie Wonder. Love those backing vocals. Uh, great Gig in the Sky, Pink Floyd. Wow. Claire Torrey. Remember that crazy kind of trippy vocal she oh. did? Yeah. Oh, absolutely love that. Walk on the Wild Side. I wanted to be one of those girls, one of those cool chicks. Do, love it. Do, do, 
Do, do, do, I'm not, do, I, I nearly do, joined in then. Do, do, do. I'm not on, a backing I, vocalist. I'm always do, trying to get do, you to do, join in. They were so, that, so cool. That. They were called thunder thighs. And they were not right. tall, lanky Afro-Americans, uh, African-Americans, excuse me. Um, they were, f they were yeah, thunder thighs from Britain. <laughs> they were amazing. Amazing. Yeah. The, 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 this is a thing as well, I, I guess, um, that... A lot of a lot of those performers, you know, their their careers, like you said, you're mentioning them now. These are key people in our music industry. Right. And right. yet many of us will not know who they are, or not know the names. There'll be people watching this tonight who will never have seen you before, but have heard your voice on so many productions. Um, just running through this, uh, th this is interesting about um the the, the, con the concerts here. This is uh, from Robert. For the concerts you served in, interesting. Um, what was this uh, uh, sheet music? I think he said something else. Uh, at arrangements for you to follow, or were the vocals that came for you work out individually at the time? Were they any different from the studio sessions of the same song? That's really interesting, Robert. That's I like a that. Fantastic That's an question, question, Robert. Thank you for that. Um, the answer really is, I think, um, very often with session singers, you are given little or no instruction. Sometimes if you're working for a producer and he knows exactly what he wants, you know, and can, can articulate it, then you kind of, that's what you do. You, you carry out that brief. But more often than not, um, you know, someone will say, well, what do you think? Or they won't even say that. They'll just expect you to come up and fall into three-part harmony and know what you're doing. I don't think Eric Clapton ever sat down with his guitar and said, right, Tess, I want you to sing this. Um, it's it was very very much about feel and and just kind of knowing your genres, knowing knowing your history, knowing your stuff. Oh, by the way, quickly another one I wish I'd sung on, Young Americans. Oh wow! Ah uh, ah, uh, uh. and and Luther Vandross was one of the backing singers on that particular track. So. Yeah, that, that's interesting, I yeah. think, how some people obviously do, you know, go from being a backing singer, then they get, they go front of stage, I guess. That Indeed, happens. they do, and so, they should, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah um, right. Okay, question in here before we go to everything online. Loads more questions coming in. Um, uh, are you all right till one o'clock in the morning? Because we've got so many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so this is from Paul, who says, um, this is Paul Hurst. Thank you, Paul, for sending in your message. Um, when working with Gary Newman, particularly on the Fury album, um, I'd assume some of the main melodies were written by Gary, but were you given free reign to ad lib and come up with all those extra brilliant phrases, songs such as Your Fascination, Call Out the Dogs and Creatures, for example? I can imagine the sessions were really vibey and good fun. Huge fun. Yeah, no, they were fantastic. Another great question. Um, Gary was always, always fantastic to work for because he would give you scope to kind of just create so he'd have a, a, an idea of where he wanted stuff to go and he'd have melodies and, you know, you'd, you'd work on the choruses. And then almost every time on every track, he'd say, right, okay, we've done the bulk of the chorus. Now just let rip. Now just yeah. sing anything you want at the end of it, which was fantastically freeing and really creative and a, and a lovely thing to do at the end of the session when you've got the bulk of the song recorded to just kind of let it fly. Sometimes it would stay on record sometimes it would be erased never never to be heard again but it was it was a lovely thing to do keep your questions coming in by the way um you can send them wherever you're watching on facebook twitter or twitch just put the question down below i'll get to see it here and we'll try and get this in in the next few minutes uh luca magnani i think i've said that correctly i hope i have luca um magnani. Miani. oh it's miani is it magnani Manian, Maybe. thank you. I don't know. I've no idea. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going with you. <laughs> that sounds better. Um, sorry, Luca. Uh, have you ever worked with Zuccaro? And I what have did you think? worked with Zuccaro. He's fantastic. Yeah, Italian uh, superstar. He's huge. And I worked on a track, I think, in 92. Uh, no, it wasn't with a track. Paul it was Young? an album called Yes. 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 Who can name... The, the hit that he had with Paul Young. I've got it. If anyone wants to uh, name it quick, go for it. Um, I'll give you. I'm going to give you ten seconds because I want to say it. <laughs> it wasn't quite ten seconds, but um, was it um, <laughs> Sensei Madonna? Yes. Was it? Yes. Yes, it was. It was. Oh, great. It was. I didn't sing on that one, but I sang on an album called Miserere. Oh, oh yes. 
great, I, great fun. Do you know what? I remember us having that on a cassette tape and um, playing that uh, just yeah. endlessly because it was yeah. Uh, yeah. such a big, you know, isn't it funny when you get a, an act who becomes so huge for such a big time and then you hardly hear much mm. from them over mm -hmm. the years, but you know mm -hmm. that, that that's I think that's always interesting. Chances um, are they're still beavering away in the background doing of something. They are. They're just of not course they as are. prominent as they once were. Yeah. Yeah, and and people also I think you know a lot of the time they they don't give uh, people the that the, the links in with um, the, these artists uh, that, that they deserve. Um, just looking through some of these questions here. Um, da -da -da, uh, Oh, okay. Here's um, here's a question from David. Uh, David saying, "How do you remember all the lyrics? Where to come in on all the songs?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Actually, that's fantastic, David. Thank you. Um, yeah, lyrics are no can be notoriously uh, like banana skins. You know, you can really trip up on them uh, because sometimes choruses sound very similar, but they've just got a slight change. So yeah, that that can be tricky. Um, and what was the other part of the question? Uh, so the question here was, uh, how do you remember all the lyrics and where to come so in you've already forgotten. the songs? Oh, where to come in. Yeah, that can also sometimes be quite challenging for a, a session singer slash backing vocalist because you're not singing the, the entire song. So very often you're just coming in at, at certain points, either you know bits in the verse or you're coming in on the choruses. So you have to keep your wits about you. You can't go wandering off. You know, you can't start looking around. Uh, you know, when you're on, on stage, you've got to be on it. Um, but it's, yeah, it just becomes second nature, I guess, after a while. Um, with all the, the 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 thoughts that people have, uh, so, sorry, by the way, to uh, to to Greer um, and and uh, a couple of others who, who I think had the answer for Sensei Madonna. And uh, <gasps> I didn't quite give them the 10 seconds uh, because no. we were so excited. And you did, the, to be fair, you did the countdown. I know, so I, I just I didn't like, do it long enough. I, no, I felt, I, I, felt I, I felt I needed it at that point. <laughs> So it's all about the um, <laughs> timing. That's it. Flow. That's uh, it. Thank you so much. Keep these questions coming. We've got uh, um, we've got about five minutes left. I can't believe it. It's so crazy how quickly it goes. Um, keep those coming in. Oh, I've got another one here. Um, I must remember where I put this because th this this has come in. Um, we've we've had so many comments from people in different parts of the world as well, which has been lovely. And some of those questions have come from other parts of. Uh, um, the world. This one um, that we had come in before the the show started, and I did want to get it in, so I will try and find it. Um, while I'm while I'm looking for that, um, just in your, your own sense of uh, some of the stories that you have, do you feel that for a lot of artists as well, and um, we hear more and more now about films being made. I don't know about you. I almost feel like there's so many artists we haven't seen films of and and bands and times live aid for example you know we've we've seen bits of it from queen but we haven't seen the live aid movie you know I, i'd love to know what that was like for you all behind the scenes you know someone said earlier you know talk about for a live aid for an hour because it's true isn't it you know that moment in itself so many different people i've spoken to like us uh, uh Steve White, Whitey drummer, you know, um, mm. with, with Paul Weller, you know, he, he he said it was just absolutely incredible. It's unbelievable to be standing at the side of the stage, then going on. And then obviously when Queen and Freddie Mercury did what he did, everyone mm. else backstage was like, it's amazing. But <laughs> how do we follow that? And we did follow it. I think Bowie was the next act. And so we were just I just remember sort of backstage in the kind of porter cabins putting our faces on and getting ready and just hearing Radio Gaga and hearing the crowd clapping along and just, okay, this this is a bit special and we're going to have to follow it now. Thankfully, Bo did a, did a sterling job. <laughs> Here's the question I was looking for. Um, we bring this up. Uh, so this has come in from Steen Jorgensen, who is watching in Denmark. Hey, um, Steen! Of all the impressive list of artists you've worked with over the years, who of them as private persons impressed you the most? And that's a really good question. And second, were you starstruck by not only meeting a legend, but also having to work with them? Let's start with that first one. What about those people um, in, I guess, in private that you were really impressed by? Um, Annie Lennox. Just a gorgeous human being. She's just so real, so extraordinarily talented, so smart, super smart, uh, and just very normal, I would say. You know, the, the, 
the life of, 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 a, of a star is anything but normal, really. Um, so it's little wonder sometimes that um, people, you know, are, are extraordinary, if you like, and, and, and different, and because and, they haven't been allowed to be normal lead a normal life but I would say Annie Annie was incredible I'd again going back to George Harrison just just brilliant very humble very humble about kind of he, he just would jokingly say uh I'm just a kid from Liverpool you know got lucky uh, that's a terrible <laughs> accent <laughs> see, sorry see, the funny th the uh, funny no, thing now is all, all of time yeah all of time yeah, all that's, of time. That's embarrassing. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Second part Amazing. of the question from uh, Steen was, uh, were you starstruck by not only meeting a legend, also having to work with them? That's an interesting one, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, there's only one time that I have been at a loss for words and I couldn't even speak to the artist. <laughs> Who? And that, that was Stevie Wonder. Right. Okay. Yeah. What a great way to end our conversation. <laughs> tell me about Stevie Wonder and Tessa Niles. Uh, yeah, there's not much to tell, unfortunately. Um, the, the whole thing was that, uh, in fact, we were working, he was working with the Eurythmics and um, myself and Shirley Lewis, another wonderful singer, and Katie Kassoon were, were working on this show. I think it was the Brits, actually. Right. And, um, and Stevie showed up at rehearsals and I... I just, I lost it, just <laughs> lost it. I just, I could, I could barely look at him because I knew there was no way I could actually say to him, you are the reason that I do what I do, that I open my mouth to sing in the first place. I knew that he's probably had that said to him thousands, hundreds of thousands of times. So I just felt, just don't say anything. Final question, Ian. We'll end with uh, my last guest from last week, I think. This is uh, from Elliot Kennedy, a record producer and songwriter. Um, I was lucky enough to work with Darlene Love and Tata Vega from the uh, 20 Feet uh, from Stardom Film. I think a documentary about the best Brit session players and singers would be awesome. Um, I know the answer to this one. Uh, would Tessa be up for that? Elliot, yes. Oh, my gosh. The Brits behind the hits. That's it. I'll have my people call your people. And Elliot, then... come on. You, you both of you know people. <sighs> this is it. The deal, it, it, it happened here. It, tonight, here. Tonight was the night. You heard it first. Elliot, you suggested it. <laughs> you need to make it happen now. <laughs> no, honestly, it would be great though, wouldn't yeah. it? Oh, so it your people amazing. talk to his that'd people, his dream. people talk to your people. Yeah, yeah that's, it would that's be your dream, dream because because ultimately, you know, the, the, the whole story of your life has been about you know, not only the career, but also the people. It's been about the people, hasn't it? Working with people. And what has it meant to you? And in, as you said earlier, Tess, in these very strange times that we're in, what has it meant to you to be part of this industry and the fact you've made so many friends as a result of it? I just feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world. And I know that sounds a bit corny um, when I hear myself saying it, it but it, it's... Oh, it's just, you know, I'm filled with a sense of gratitude that I was able to chase a dream and it it happened and the people I met along the way, I had so much encouragement from people early on, which is a huge thing, I think, for, you know, chasing, chasing your dream. If you have people that say, oh, don't be ridiculous, you're never going to do that, um, then you might, you might not do it. Um, so I was fortunate to have that. And it's just, it's the community. It's the sense of belonging that everybody wants. Tessa Niles, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us on the conversation. Uh, thank you for, for being here and being part of it. And thank you for being part of the soundtrack to our lives and, and to all of those songs that we hum away, we sing in our head. We sometimes do, like I do, the wrong lyrics in the wrong order <laughs> to the wrong song. But still, uh, we really appreciate what you've given to the music industry. Thank you so much, Dom. <laughs> stop it i can't believe you've written that <laughs> i'll stop it now okay no she's got another one <laughs> tessa niles
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Dom. And, and thank you, everyone who's who sent in their their comments. It's been an absolute joy. I know that you've you, you've all enjoyed it. So thank you so much. And Tessa, really appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there we are. That is this week's edition of The Conversation. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in messages. I'm sorry if we didn't get to all of them, but you can still put your messages up on the stream uh, once this has gone out as well. You can just add your thoughts to what you've seen. Uh, I do urge you to go, and she hasn't asked me to do this, I promise you, I do urge you to go and take a look at that book because it is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Tess and Niall's story, there we go. Uh, backtrack. It is a wonderful book. I have read it and I love it. And in fact, I've read it a couple of times because I really enjoy the stories, the ins and outs of it all and everything. Um, we will be back with another guest very, very soon. And, you know, if you want to get in touch with us, because uh, I, I love hearing from people and their responses to what they've been watching. I know tonight we've gone over the midnight hour, but um, that's fine, isn't it? Because we're all here together on a Friday morning. Um, if you want to drop us a line, please, please do. Uh, we have a, an email address that um, is, is there for you. So, you know, do do get in contact with us, uh, laughingfrogproductions at gmail.com. If you've got a guest that you've always wanted to hear from, and uh, maybe we can track them down and get them on. It, um, it, it's easier if I know them, obviously, but we'll try, <laughs> we'll try and do that. Uh, but thank you so much for being with us. And uh, until the next time, uh, look after yourself and look after other people. Uh, there's a great... Um, uh, song at the moment going around isn't it called treat people with kindness and the one thing I've learned about doing this conversation is uh, how much that really has come in because all these people that I've been speaking to I've got to be honest with you they're exactly the same when they're not on camera or talking on a microphone uh, they're really nice people and that's probably what makes them sustain their careers and have been so well thought of anyway from me to you for now thanks for watching and we'll see you soon 